What would you say are the main differences between steel frames versus timber frames? Steel is a bit more of a lightweight construction. Timber's a little bit heavier. Most times when people tell us they want to build a steel frame home, the number one thing is, oh, because termites won't eat it. Termites should not get into your home if the home was constructed properly to begin with. Hey guys, welcome to The Builder's Edge. I'm Norm Wales from Norm Wales Constructions. Now, for me, the whole purpose of this podcast here is to bring a little bit more awareness around the construction industry. I've been feeling for many, many years that there's not enough helpful information out there to support you guys to make the right choice. Now, we are a smaller family independent building company and we're not here to build everybody's home. But we would definitely love to be able to work with you to facilitate your dream home. But if we don't build your new home, we want you to be able to make the right decision in choosing the right builder for you. So hopefully the information that I'm able to provide through this podcast can be informative and helpful that you can now create your dream home. So I hope you enjoy it and thanks for watching. We're going to talk about steel frames versus timber frames. What would you say are the main differences between steel frames versus timber frames? Yeah, look, the difference between steel frame and timber frame, I guess, you know, your steel is a bit more of a lightweight construction. Um, You know, timber's a little bit heavier. Uh, But really, like, between the two, like, they're they're completely different. It's an apple to a banana, to be honest. You know, like, they both Mm -hmm. service the same uh, outcome. But um, I guess it really comes down to the quality and the finish that you're wanting from your home when it comes down to choosing, you know, what is best suitable, you know, uh, for yourself there. Um, There is probably a bit of a misconception out there in regards to people seem to think that, you know, most times when people tell us they want to build a steel frame home, the number one thing is, oh, because termites won't eat it. And look, fair enough, that's a fair point. You know, they're not going to eat steel, but um, steel still does rust as well. Uh, but, you know, termites should not get into your home if the home was constructed properly to begin with. Mm. You know, so if the home is constructed right, you, you shouldn't have to worry about termites. So coming down to steel, the timber, it, it shouldn't really matter there. Um, I myself personally believe uh, timber frames are a better way to go. Um, and that is more to do with about how the home intertwines and connects together. So you've got all your timber mouldings and, and your fit out aspect of stuff there, which is all glued and nailed. So you've got timber to timber. Your house will always shrink and contract and as I say, talk to you. So it's going to move through summer, winter, you know, it grows, shrinks, moves around. But if you've got timber to timber, it's species that are going to move more together and not react against each other that timber to steel would do. Uh, even then the fixings, um, you know, if, if you're fitting off and putting your timber mouldings against steel there, people are screwing that or they're using a, a different type of nail and glue, you're not getting the same joining method, you know. So the house will move differently than it would be as it was mm. timber. Yeah. So, so um, just, just on that though, so what would then be... Um, the actual benefits then to going to steel. Yeah, and, and look, you know, really it's, it's more the benefit of the timber is because you get a, a, a more of a quality finish. Like the benefit of steel is really the lightweight construction. So it's probably a little bit easier for the tradespeople on site with erecting and assembling and that sort of stuff. Um, and I guess it's... It's, it's been able to be manufactured and produced, you know, I guess a little bit more economically. But then those plants that produce these steel frames and trusses and, you know, that sort of material there, they tend to have probably larger margins than a timber frame company mm. would because of their labour componentry, I guess. But it really comes down to the finish that you're really wanting from your home when choosing that aspect of it. Mm. But, you know, you're always going to get a better finish with a timber 
quality frame home. Do, do you do you run into to customers who are kind of fixated on on perhaps building with a steel frame home? Um, and in that case, how do you kind of approach that? Because I, I guess building in Bundaberg, you guys are at times more coastal, and you're you're, you're getting a lot more ocean breeze there. How does that play into the whole steel frame? Yeah, look, definitely having a steel frame home down in those coastal areas, like, as I mentioned before, steel does rust. Uh, We have done some um, rather large remodelling projects, but we also do a lot of knockdown rebuild. And we actually just currently uh, just demolished um, a complete new home there and it actually had steel frame um, structures through the home and it was actually rusted away and it was right on the coast, you know. So the myth of, I guess, people being worried about termites, you know, yes, termites won't eat steel, but steel will rust as well and it does corrode Mm. and calcify. Um, So you do have those problems with um, that deteriorating over time as well. So... Yeah, the whole steel frame, you know, being a better solution to timber, I, I, I really don't think uh, the steel frame is the best approach, you know, especially in our environment uh, where things are. Like, I'm sure it does have a place there, mm. but I, I think it does uh, tend to come under more that high-volume project builder sort of style there where, you know, they're more fixated on the actual overall cost, not mm. the overall quality of how things come together. Mm. And the general public really... You know, they don't know any wiser, really. Like, they see these uh, ads on TVs and, you know, people tell them it's a great product and I guess they're, they're led to believe that there. But, um, you know, first hand for myself that have, you know, removed these homes that have been corroded and mm. um, seen how they do adjoin, it, it's not the best finish, you know, that, that I would be comfortable delivering a product to my customers. Yeah, I mean, that's really interesting because people have the, the whole termite um, narrative in their mind. How often do you guys actually encounter homes where termites have sort of gone in and done their done their damage? Oh, look, if it's any new home that we've constructed, nothing gets into them there. You know, like it's uh, more common when you start, as I said, doing some of these knockdown rebuilds and stuff like that there, that you can come across stuff that hasn't been constructed properly and, uh, you know, termites may have invaded uh, certain areas or had been there and nested and you've seen the old nests that now have now been treated. But um, as I said, generally speaking, if, if your concern really is termites there, it's about actually having the right termite barriers and the right building uh, construction method process in place. Yeah. So what, what would you guys do? Walk us through a bit of the process that you guys do at Norm Wales to sort of protect that. Yeah, look, for ourselves, uh, it, it's really important that um, from the get-go you, you build a nice solid foundation uh, so get a nice compacted pad put in place, ele- elevate it up there so uh, your site doesn't retain water. It actually diverts water from the home so you don't have water and moisture there, which termites do like moisture. Um, and then by actually working with a nice, uh, like if it's a slab on ground, as, as an example there, it's um, once again elevated up there, ha- has a full visual barrier around the outside of the slab uh, then you also have a termite barrier, a full termite barrier around the outside of the slab as well, plus any penetration will also have a barrier around all the pipes and conduits and all that inside the actual slab. And once that's all poured, uh, we also like to go to the extent of uh, putting a term seal around our, our frescoes and our patios. It is not necessary, especially the way we construct, because they've got to get through a visual barrier, the cordon barriers, but... It's uh, future-proofing a home because, like, the homes we build, we want to stand the test of time. So sometimes making those extra little investments there um, in getting the perfect product is, um, you know, in best interest for all parties. But, you know, if you have a site there that has termites, you can actually put a chemical barrier around the outside as well. But, um, yeah, as I said, like, generally when it comes down to steel frame and timber frame there, it generally comes into the termite spectrum, uh, with stuff there, but uh, yeah, look, steel frame being constructed in our coastal area, yeah. um, I don't think it has a, a really good place. Do, do you do you see many homes sort of on that coastal area being built with steel? Ah, uh, look, we do see um, some of them around. Yeah. There's not a lot of them, um, but 
yeah, th- th- there are um, people that are adamant that mm. um, that's the direction that they wish to go yeah, right. um, because they get told what they think yeah. is true. But um, e- even if you, you take the termites away from it, you take the, the rust away from it and try and compare them as equally as you possibly can, it still comes down to how the products are linked and joined together. Mm. And it's about getting the best result you know, mm. at the end of the day for the customer. Like, we can build with steel. There's nothing stopping us build with steel there. You know, we've worked with it in the past there and, you know, many of us. But for me, we select the products that we know that we can stand by and give our customers mm. the best, you know, overall finish, you know, most importantly. Yeah. I mean, and just, just quickly touching on the financial side of things, are there any more sort of cost-effective cost effective reasons to choose one over the other? Look, I believe it's led that uh, people think steel is um, a little bit uh, cheaper of an option mm-hmm. there. And I think you'll find at times there it can be uh, a, a little bit more cost effective, but it comes down to the thickness and the grading of the walls of the steel. You know, you only have to look into the shed companies there. A little off topic is, you know, you'll get places that are offering these unbelievable, too good to be true shed kits, but they're not cyclone rated or mm. their different thickness in the walls, you know, of the actual steel itself. And they do the same thing with the frames and the trusses when it comes into the steel. They're always trying to cut it back that little bit thinner. So the durability in that there, it's, it's very questionable. Like obviously, it does pass a, a coating point. But, um, yeah, for me, it's about the overall finish and the quality of the home at the end mm. of the day. Love it. Um just wrapping this episode up, Norm, what final advice would you give to somebody choosing between a timber frame versus a steel frame? Well, look, generally speaking, the people we talk to there have said they, they're they more concerned about the termite aspect. And if, if that is the concern, mm-hmm. it's not necessarily a reason to go to steel. Mm-hmm. It's a matter of making sure that you've got all the right processes put in place and the steps through the construction that things are going to be built correctly um you know like if people are really truly fixated on going steel you know we can definitely discuss that and and work with them upon you know i guess their questions and concerns but in my experience it's it's always been around just those couple of factors you Mm -hmm. know and um it's more to the point that people led to believe that as being truthful than actual what the facts are because even if you have a steel frame home Termos are still going to get in there and need all the timber mouldings and bits and pieces if it's not built right. Mm. So, so, yeah, that to me sounds like timber framing is more superior. Look at this. <laughs> it, it just comes down to the overall finish and the quality that you're really wanting from your yeah. home. You know, and from someone that's worked with all of it there, um, you know, it really is uh, a, a far superior product at the end of the day, picking timber over steel. Yeah, love that. Well, on that note, we're going to end this episode with a get to know your norm question. So over to you to grab a question for me. All righty. Here we go. Okay. This is interesting. Okay, Norm. <clears throat> How do you stay motivated on your long-term goals, especially during your ch- most challenging times? Stay motivated, I wouldn't say is overly challenging for myself there I've always been one to always think ahead plan ahead Um, I think um, thinking ahead and reaching for those goals that you set for yourself there is a motivation in itself there so you know you've just got to remember you know where you're going what you're wanting to achieve you know and um, sticking to your guns I guess there but you know it's important, I guess, to have a little bit of an outlet there as well, you know, like a, a treat to yourself there in between the thick and the hardness of it all that, um, you know, it, it could just be a quick little weekend away. It could be mm. going for a mm. run, you know. It's um, just a matter of uh, having something to take your mind off it for a really short window and then come back and, you know, recharged and um, staying back on the course that you set for yourself. Mm. Yeah, love that insight. That's awesome. All right. Well, as always, Norm, thank you so much. No problem at all. Thanks, mate. Cheers, mate.